Hey Data Junkies, welcome back. Your host Sean Jansen here as we're continuing our journey into multiple linear regression with topic video 10 on mean centering and standardization. This is continuing on from our previous video where we did an introduction of transformations and we're taking it a little bit farther because mean centering and standardization is sort of a special case that we use quite frequently in uh, statistics for different purposes here. Now what is mean centering and what is standardization as it pertains to what we're dealing with here. So mean centering means we're taking all of the observed values that we had and we are subtracting the mean. This is going to instead of having the average value of whether it's the dependent or the independent variable that you're working with. Most cases we deal with this with the, in, the dependent variable. But what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever average value it was in that particular vector and the new average is going to be zero. And anything that is higher than the mean is going to become a positive number and anything that is less than the mean is going to become a negative number. And similarly speaking, standardization does the exact same thing that mean centering does but we divide it by the standard deviation, which is going to transform all of those mean-centered scores into z-scores. In and instead of it being terms of spread in the units of whatever variable it is, it's now spread in terms of standard deviations. Distances, normalized distances from the mean. So, why would we go ahead and do this? Well, there's a few different reasons why, and I'm sort of branching these out into a checklist here for you. Now, and what it is that they're certainly doing. Both of them are going to have a mean of zero. The mean-centered can interpret a y-intercept. Standardized, not so much. Both, oh, I'm sorry, the mean-centered retains its units of measure. Standardized don't. That's part of the reason it's called standardized. It removes the units of measure. The mean-centered keeps the scale. It has the same slope coefficients it had before whereas the standardized rescales the variable against a standard deviation. Now, in part because of that, standardizing can help you with multicollinearity, and it can help you when you have interaction terms and polynomial terms. Mean centering can help you out with that as well, depending on where we're going with it. So let's go ahead and see some particular examples here, and we're going to go with the empty cars data set and pull up the variable for horsepower. When I want to mean center it, I just take empty cars dollar sign horsepower minus the mean of empty cars dollar sign horsepower. And I'm recoding that into a new variable. I'm calling empty cars dollar sign HP for horsepower dot MC for just mean center. And if I want to standardize it, I don't even have to worry about going through the whole uh, observation minus mean divided by standard deviation. There's a nice little function that does that for us, and it's called scale. So I'm going to run the scale function on MT cars, and I'm going to make that a new, new variable called hp.st for horsepower standardized. And if I want to go ahead and look at these in terms of their summary statistics and brief histograms, what's going to be on the screen here now up at the top is just sort of a table that shows some base summary statistics for each of these. And the top row is original, followed by mean centered, followed by standardized. Note that the original and the mean-centered have the same standard deviation, roughly speaking, but the means, the original was a mean at approximately 147, and the mean-centered is at zero. Compare mean-centered and standardized. They both share the same common mean of zero, but standardized now has a standard deviation of one part of the fact of it being standardized. And then the values in between, minimums, maximums, medians, those are all reshifted. Original to mean centered, all it's doing is changing its different positions based on having the new mean assigned at zero. And when it goes to standardized, these are rescaled in terms of distances in ter at standard deviations. And you can see how the distributions change here uh, based at the different levels here. The one in the blue is the original, green is the mean centered, and red is the standardized. The one that's red and the standardized does the best job at collapsing these values in. If we wanted to go ahead and look in terms of the regression coefficients here and the way they spread out, they are a little small here on the screen, so I'm going to make sure I kind of pull out the main points for you. In this case, we are regressing the quarter second to find out how fast are these vehicles going by horsepower. We were 
we were doing horsepower at mean, standard, and standardized. So this top one is just how fast is the car going at the quarter second by its horsepower. And what I have is a horsepower coefficient of negative 0.018, and it's highly statistically significant with a p-value of 5.77 e negative 6. Looking down, we're switching it to do the same quarter second distance, but instead we're using the mean centered value. The mean centered value is the one that has the mean at zero, and then all values above the mean are positive, all those below the mean are negative, at the same spread uh, that the original had. So now I have my hp.mc for mean centered. I have the same regression coefficient of negative 0.018, and the same p-value of 5.77e negative 06. The, regu the regression coefficient is exactly the same, but mean centering is very useful for different situations where I might need to deal with things like multicollinearity, or if I just want to be able to rescale things so I have all of my values perhaps cross at the y-axis at zero. Remember we said sometimes that it's nice to have meaningful y-intercepts and you want to have things cross at the origin. If you rescale all your variables at the mean center, that will be one way to do it for you. But I digress. Let me go back down to the where we're now using the standardized value here. Here, the regression coefficient is different. It's a negative 1.26. So for every additional increase in standardized horsepower, this is for a one standard deviation increase in uh, horsepower, we see a 1.2 change in average change in the quarter second timing. Again, it's highly statistically significant at the same p-value of 5.77e negative 6. The commonality between these is no matter which version you do, you're going to be preserving the same p-value that you had before. And the coefficients will be the same between the original and mean centered, and it'll just be rescaled in terms of standard deviation changes in the standardized version. So let's go ahead and bring some of this up just to kind of see how we plot these back out for a moment. And when I plot these out, uh, we're going to see that the original is on the left in the blue, the mean centered is in the middle in the red, and the standardized is the one on the right in the green. And all of the plots have the same points across. All of the regression lines have the same regression line slopes. What is different are the scales of the variables. The x-axis variables are the ones that were our horsepower, and they are changing depending on how they're dealing between original, mean-centered, and standardized. And that's going to go ahead and just kind of wrap up this sort of crash course introduction to mean-centering and standardization. They're very novel and interesting techniques that can come in handy when you're in a bind or just want to get things centering everything at the origin. But I'll go ahead and see you all next time as we wrap up our last video talk on polynomials. I'll see you then.